welcome everyone to our call. We're going to just jump right in here because Dr. Sue and Deb are up late and they're doing this for us out of the goodness of their hearts and I thank them very sincerely. You have joined our dynamic call on Happy Uterus Joyful Life with Deb Weiland and Dr. Susan Lawton. My name is Terry Helms and I would love to welcome you here. Deb and Dr. Sue have worked together on all of the sugar and candida and the protocols to go with that and address that in your life and this evening they are going to talk with us about endometriosis and the things that we can do to take care of that. I just cannot express enough gratitude for Dr. Sue doing this. She has been traveling extensively lately and always is so willing to help and to gift us with her knowledge so that we can better understand what we need to do to keep the body on target and in line and to give other people options when they come to us for help with the oils and wanting to make changes. So Dr. Sue, thank you so much and I'm going to turn this over to you. Well, thank you, Terry, and hello to everyone out in California land and the West Coast in Spokane and Kalispell and Seattle and Carlsbad and La Quinta. And my friend <laughs> Deb Wayland is right here. Say hi. Hi, everyone. And we're going to go, we're going to show you some scary pictures. Deb said that I should let you know ahead of time if you're not familiar with human anatomy. We're going to show you your insides, and then we're going to show you your insides under stress. So if you don't like it, turn away. Aha. Can you see our magic diagram? Yes, it looks great. We're going to be talking about the uterus. The uterus is connected by many long strands from different organ systems, but it's all connected to the endocrine system. With the endocrine system, we have all of our reproductive systems, our adrenal glands, the hypothalamus. Everyone's heard Dr. Hill talk about the hypothalamus and how positively the hypothalamus is affected by our wonderful molecules and the essential oils. Like to keep me sharp tonight, I did my normal frankincense and wild orange. Num num. Mm -hmm. And you can see on the screen, I want you to pay in particular attention to the part that shows the kidney, the uterus, the ovary, and the small intestine over here because we're going to be talking about things that affect them. For some reason, my individual keys are not being helpful tonight. Okay. Does everybody know what this screen is? Deb? I do, I do. What is this screen? <laughs> oh, it's all of all our lovely different types of hormones that we have within our body. And I have to tell you, Dr. Sue, the first time I saw this, I was a little overwhelmed myself. I knew a lot of these, but I never imagined all of these that deal with this endocrine system. It's, it's actually overwhelming because they only normally focus on one or two or three of them when, uh, when, they're, when other people are talking about this issue. Right. Well, I wanted to let you know that there are a lot of elements that all talk to each other. Most people, women, know about the T3 and the T4. They know their thyroid and parathyroid make T3 and make T4. And it spins out from the thyroid, parathyroid. And one has to match up with the testosterone. And one has to match up with the GABA. And then they go on from there because now they're a unique element and they bump into several other smaller elements and they create what's called a wonderful cascade effect. And mm -hmm. we create one set of balancing hormones after another. Remember all of our individual cells need to do what we do every day. They need to get hydrated. They need to get rid of waste. They need to breathe in oxygen. And again, they need to give out the CO2 
or whatever the byproduct is of their finishing processing. Mm -hmm. Can you see all of the words now? Yes. When we talk about, in a little bit, we're going to be talking about um, HRT and that how can affect you relative to endometriosis. And right here you see our buddies that everyone talks about. Progesterone, estrogen, testosterone, and where's the other one? Well, everybody knows about dopamine from hearing about people with Parkinson's. And you know about, you hear about these things and you're not always sure what goes with what. There isn't going to be any test. You don't have to worry about it. But I just needed you to know there's a lot more going on inside your body than just three hormones. Here you go. This is the insides. Here's your fallopian tube. Here's your ovary. Here's the area where everything takes place. And this background is an exaggeration of what a healthy surface would be within the uterus. Isn't it pretty? Beautiful. I love the colors of it. Yeah, yeah I think it's kind of neat. Yep. Endometrium. Think of it as a garden for your body. I like that, Dr. Sue. All right. Now, when people talk to me about endometriosis, they say, what can I do? I have such terrible pain. I have so many things going on. Please be patient with me while I show you pictures. Because when we're talking about pain and we're talking about why things happen, sometimes it's helpful that people understand how all of their parts fit together in such a magical way. Back here, you see your tailbone. Isn't that cool? All that wraps around. Uh -huh. You got cute padding here right on the derriere. You have your cervix. The rectum is right here. That's where waste is eliminated. You have the major ligament that holds everything in place. This is the top of the colon, vaginal area, bladder, the uterus. All these parts are supposed to be involved with life going on. All works well together. This area is all fairly well clean, too, isn't it? It is. Now we're going to tell you what endometriosis is. It occurs when endometrial cells, similar to those that form on the inside of the uterus, grow in an abnormal location outside of the uterus. These areas are called endometriosis implants. Endometriosis implants are most commonly found on the ovaries, the fallopian tubes, and on the outer surface of the uterus or intestines. It kind of migrates all around. Endometriosis is one of the most common gynecological diseases. The reason it's called a disease is because it grows. It's a condition inside of you that changes. It's not like a wart that establishes itself and then doesn't change much. Endometriosis changes. And it affects more than 5.5 million women in North America. Some women don't have any symptoms at all. Others may not find out they have the disease until they have major problems when they try to conceive. That's like their first clue. Maybe something's too thick. Maybe something's not right. right. Endometrial cells or cells that line the uterus are shed each month during menstruation. Normally, if a woman is not pregnant, the endometrial tissue builds up inside the uterus and then breaks down into loose blood and tissues and is just shed. It prepares a nest. It's ready for pregnancy. It's ready for, previous to that, for an egg and a sperm to get together and make a new life. The cycle of growth and shedding happens every month or so. Now, this is the covering on all those things we just showed you a few minutes ago. Do you recognize the fallopian tubes and the uterus? You recognize all of this? These adhesions and these dark things are the endometriosis outside of the uterus. Those cells shouldn't be here. If you notice these passages, 
you may be able to figure out how sometimes things end up in the wrong place. And we're going to help you with that in a minute. Now we're looking inside of the human torso. And these adhesions, you see the gummy part here? That's mm -hmm. the part. Their adhesions are situated between the surface of the right diaphragm and the liver. And the reason adhesions are troublesome is when normal motion is trying to take place whether it's your intestinal tract, it's your uterus, it's your bladder, it's your, your deep breathing, you're pushing down the peritoneum wall, whatever normal motion is, you're unaware of it because it doesn't have like pain or nerve endings that are hypersensitive in that area. But when you have normal motion and you have adhesions, then things start to complain because the motion is not fluid. Possible symptoms of endometriosis. The most common symptom is pain that occurs prior to, during, or after. The pain can occur during intercourse, during urination, or during bowel movements. Some women have severe disabling pain. It can also cause chronic pain in low back or pelvis. Other women have mild symptoms or no symptoms at all. Remember, we've told everyone for years that everyone, how they think, how they feel, how they respond to stress, how people, some people over-exercise, overextend themselves. Some people are wonderful gymnasts when they're little kids and they overextend things and the bodies have to learn how to, you know, put things back in place. Well, that can account for some of the exceptions. Some of the, nothing is, no two people are alike. These are very minimal adhesions between the left ovary and the pelvic side wall. These adhesions will be commonly associated with a mild to moderate endometriosis. You can see the pulling action, right? You know what I'm talking about with adhesions right here. The thickening muscle. It would be like the gristle in the chicken. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Exactly. And sometimes... You won't really be aware of that, but sometimes, like, if you're just going to roll over in your bed at night, just that motion might cause a little bit of discomfort, and um, you might become a little bit more aware of it. Now, as you said, this is minimal. It's not that large. So, so what you were saying before is the more active the person, the better shape they're in. They may not even be aware of this yet. Right. Right. A lot of people don't find out until they want to get pregnant, and they're going like, hey, we got the recipe. We are thinking positive right. thoughts and mm -hmm. we're doing all the exercises and there's no fertilization taking place. What is the deal? Right. There are many factors, many factors. In the United States, for some reason, medically, everybody wants to establish a blame. Family members will stand around and say, well, that's from your side of the family. No, that's from your side of the family. Well, mm -hmm often has very little to do with it. They seem to right. play a role in some areas of endometrial cells outside of the uterus may be present even at birth. It is also possible that endometrial cells may travel to abnormal areas during the cycle, during surgeries, or through the bloodstream. Like if you had IBS, like if your walls were so thin that the waste couldn't process out, the normal way, it would leak back into your bloodstream. Oh, interesting. Right. Immunological factors may be involved as a defect in the immune system could cause failure to eliminate the misplaced endometrial cells. Whoops. There we are. Um, other factors to consider, please consider... Some people have a tipped uterus. They know this after they've had a gynecological exam. And when you've had a tipped uterus, if it's tipped forward, it may not be in your best interest to use um, those little tubey things during your cycle that are called Tampax. Because quite by accident, you could be pushing the menses back up into the uterus where some of the endometrial cells are then taking reroute. This is one of the things they've been looking at and three different medical reports that, and I'm not using Tampax as a brand name, please. I'm not saying anything bad about that company. I'm just using that. Tampon. Right, tampons. Thank you. 
you guys all know it's a gathering of tight cotton material for absorption. That sometimes when those are inserted too deeply or too far, they're actually pushing things back in that really just need to come out. So consider your internal structure very carefully. The, probably also changing them frequently enough. Right. Would I that think, also be an issue? I'm, I'm not sure about that part so much as the pushing part was what they were observing. What, what obstacles people put in that area, um, what blockages, even sometimes right. using um, different types of mechanical birth control methods can hold in, you know, things rather than let them flow, and then it would get backed up also. That makes perfect sense. Like this sure. is the inside of a uterus, and the inside of the uterus with endometriosis adhering to the walls, not freeing itself up. This causes pain. Growing outside, also go through a cycle similar. This is where we get into trouble because people can't understand spotting. They can't understand why I had my cycle five days ago. Now I'm having spotting. Well, that's because right. the endometrial cells that are grouped that are not inside the uterus also go through periodic motion. They go through yeah. a life, a slough off, and that's part of what's happening. It doesn't have to be thick. It doesn't have to be a lot. But that is one of the things that happens, and the body tries to make it break down, and that can also cause a lot of pain. Remember, the body is a very efficient system. When we learn how to work with it, it behaves much better, and we become pain-free. Uh -huh. um, infertility, again, is an issue. Um, probably, they said, in about 45%, 54%. Of the cases of infertility, some measure of endometriosis outside of the uterus was discovered. And they did some scraping and they did some minor surgery to eliminate, you know, like the secondary cycles. Because whenever you avoid right. chemical response in the body, you remember that whole page of hormones? That's right. They're going to start doing a happy dance. It's not necessarily in your best interest. And yeah. then... Well, how people get confused and what they're discussing with their doctor are these magic things. These are fibroids. fibroids. And they're just a gathering of nonspecific, non-cancerous. Everything we're showing you is not cancerous. And we don't use the words precancerous because that's lawyer speak to make everybody afraid. Every cell in my body is precancerous because it doesn't have cancer. Get it? Right. The lawyers want to tell people, well, we did the tests on all the tissue and you don't have to worry for another six months. It's precancerous. That means it doesn't have any cancer. But the deal with fibroids yeah. is because there's such a thickening of tissue, again, in these areas that you expect to be free and clear once a month. It's sometimes hard to tell from symptoms. Do you have fibroids going on? Got a little endometriosis. How temporary is it? What can we do to control these things? How can we manage these things so we feel better? Ah, again, we're showing you the thickening. And now you're starting to see some of the dark spots that are gathering because the blood flow is constricted. The dense adhesions are commonly associated with advanced endometriosis. Think of it as it's so tight. It's starting to restrict circulation in a healthy way. So it's like neuropathy on the inside. Only right, if, what, Go ahead. I was going to say, just looking at this picture, what you need to realize is that this is outside your uterus. This is not internal now. The fallopian tube, every, what you're looking at now, this is outside, correct? Yes. It's on the outer part of the uterus? Yes. Or are we looking inside? Nope. nope. We're looking at the outside because you're looking at a fallopian tube, which they have the adhesions, which are these things, have actually mm -hmm. stuck the tube against the side of the uterus. And when that happens, right. even if you were to mature an egg, 
in this position of the organs, we could not get it right. in and there to go swimming with his happy sperm. Right. 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 And they can treat this with laparoscopy and they can go in and they put this little teeny spritz, spritz, spritz inside. And then they have suction that kind of breaks up these extra things and it gets temporary relief. The reason is that it's temporary. What do you think? Because after the procedure, they can actually come right back. Right. If you don't change something, the body will repeat what was there. It's like when you have water pocket on a knee. You've had that. And I'm your sure. dad had that. And we before we got together, they used to drain it. And remember, you would be frustrated because it would all come back so fast. Sure. Once the body's used to holding something, it repeats it. Mm-hmm. And some people try to use HRT, and they try to mimic the hormonal state of menopause, eliminating menstrual periods and reducing the pain of endometriosis. And then it lists the types of things that they use. As a result, they can have unpleasant side effects, such as since they've pushed you into early menopause. Right, those um, lovely hot flashes. And the vaginal dryness. Right. And it starts. And I, I, bone loss is also a concern during that time. Mm-hmm. And changes in mood. You know, women get that, the crabby during what they call PMS. Well, you get them much more when you're, when you're going through menopause or when you're doing HRT therapy. Yeah. And the part that I always try to help people understand is, The scientists, God bless them, have truly been inspired to provide so many different elements chemically to try to provide relief for conditions with chemistry. And sometimes those chemicals create a different issue that you then have to have other pills for. So let's Mm -hmm. talk about in a few minutes all the things we can do, we can control that have proven successful. Now, they can remove the endometrial growths or the scars. Most women will have pain relief after this is done, but the recurrence of system, you know, re- symptoms is 45% within a year, and it's more likely with more time. Hormone treatments after surgery may reduce that chance, but that doesn't relieve you of early menopause. Does that make sense? Sure. This is an yeah. advanced stage, Okay. This is not healthy tissue. This is all very constricted and very unhealthy. Now, okay, now we're done with the ugly pictures. You can relax. (laughs) Okay, who is at risk for endometriosis? There's two things I wanted to make sure we got tonight, Deb. That was the part about people need to understand they haven't done anything wrong. And number two... They can take very gentle, gradual means to make a change because more and more physicians are telling them the truth. We can treat it with painkillers. We can treat it with HRT. We can recommend things, but until you change something inside of your own chemistry, it's going to keep coming back. And the risk factors for endometriosis are varied. It is most common in women who are between 30 and 40 or in their 40s, women who have not given birth, women who have periods that last longer than seven days, they started before the age of 12 or shorter cycles like they're like every 21 days, every 24 days or have a family history of the same condition. Now, What's really important is that you communicate with your physician. If you're in pain, you need to keep a diary and you need to track so that you're properly communicating just enough. I don't want you going in there and be whiny Annie. I want you to be organized and say, I used to be able to go walking every morning with my friends for an hour and a half before I went to work. And now I'm in so much pain, I can't do that. I noticed the pain was that bad for six months. So you have to give him a measure of your activity is now restricted. So there is a reason you must look at what's wrong with me. 
when it occurs? Is it constant, continuous, or is it just during a timing cycle? What's the duration? Is it constant? Is it like a knife? Or if you stand up, is it worse? If you lay down, is it worse? We just don't want you to go in there and just start blubbering and crying. Oh, I'm dying inside. No, be very clear. Anything affect it? You know, do you feel better after exercise? Do you feel better after um, you had birthday cake? What makes you feel better? Anything right. that... And the simple way to do this is just keep a little diary, you know, and jot down how you feel every day, you know, and, and what you're doing. And just um, bring that with you when you go to the doctor and you'll have all, you'll have, you know, you'll help him by giving, or her, by giving them all this accurate information. Okay, so if you're doing the same thing over and over each month and you're expecting different results, what does that mean? You're insane? No. Yep. <laughs> you're crazy. So mm -hmm. this is for people who say they want to change this status or they want to provide information to help their friends recover from this. Treatment. Yay. Change your diet. Change your attitude. Increase water. Avoiding constipation is extraordinary. It's so important. Exercise 20 minutes a day. That means conscious motion for 20 minutes. DDR prime is really important. Affirmations. The only oil, because everyone's going to say, which oil shouldn't I use? I would just use a minimum amount of fennel or not at all. Lifelong vitality, DDR. Terrazyme getting Terrazyme. Yep, the terrazyme is very important because it's enzymes. Right. And clary. this is all readily available Go ahead. for us. Yeah. We have all this. Clary Calm is great. Yes, phytoestrogen, bone nutrient. Um, remember the part about, I'll change that to tampon, right? They didn't mean to use the Tampax name. You guys know what I'm talking about. It's a little inserting device that quite by accident could be holding things in place that is keeping spillage where you don't need it. We're getting there, guys. All right, here's the deal. Whisper, if it's agreeable to you, should be applied every day if you have endometriosis. What we're talking about in the next couple of slides is you should be doing this every day. When we're talking about attitude and we're talking about you wanna make a change, in order to change your attitude, you have to change how you see things. In order to change your attitude, you need to declare your intention. That's the most important thing. Whisper, whisper or clary calm can be put right across the abdomen. If you get any rash, what do we do? Coconut oil. Yes. Also, we can stop applying it to the skin and also incorporate the Candida Cleanse because all these wonderful oils, when we put them on the stomach or we put them on the bottom of our feet and they inspire the body yeah. to get rid of things, mm -hmm. then you need to just put it in the bottom of the feet or we're going to ingest it or we're going to get rid of the Candida so it'll stop trying to run away. You mean stopping sugar, white flour? Yes, that's what we're going to tell people yes. about. Did you tell me Saturday night is when we're going to do that this week? Oh, Saturday night, Sunday? Maybe Sunday after morning. Easter, my <laughs> yeah, happy Easter. Don't bite the ears off the bunny. <laughs> All right, Clary Calm as, we know, as uh, Solace is, is also wonderful. I love that oil. Yes, we put that, we call that the smiley face around the ankle bones every day. And again, mm -hmm. you're feeding your body what it needs. The DDR Prime is such a gift to us. It's, My favorite. It reduces the oxidative stress to your DNA, which means it eliminates obstacles so that you only make healthy cells, not broken cells. And it also gets rid of apoposis cells and helps with renewal. So it is the perfect formula 
for you to be taking in a capsule format to eliminate what you don't need. You don't need any endometrial extra cells hanging out anywhere, right? That's right. Zendocrine for deep cleaning and self-detox. And again, <laughs> we'll caution you. I know the directions say that you can take two. But it's been my experience that if you have had any experience in life where you have, may have stored up some anger or frustration or felt like you had had your creativity suppressed or you were uh -huh. not free to express yourself, or in some adults I have met recently, they never even knew they had a choice about having a turn in their life uh -huh. to be happy. Just do the Zendocrine one at lunch. That, that would probably be best. Start gentle. You mean you mean we don't want to release the inner beast? <laughs> no, keep that beast bound up. We must keep the beast bound up. Clary Sage is an extraordinary gift. Clary Sage, mm -hmm. remember, is excellent for helping you balance male and female, for helping you balance action with spirituality. It's a great centering oil. What is it we don't do with Clary Sage ever? We never well, mix. We don't. It, we don't ever mix it with alcohol. So if you guys right. like to have a little glass of wine before bed at night, do not use Clary Sage. You will have nightmares. It gives you very vivid dreams and it releases blockages to your imagination. But if you've had alcohol, it tips it to the negative side. Phytoestrogen is amazing, and many of us have been asking them to repackage this, and again, stop calling it women, and the bone yeah. nutrients stop calling it women, because we have encountered men with serious hormone imbalances because of what they consumed for so many of the first 30 years of their life, with all the food additives and the hormones and different things that their particular body and their particular lifestyle has formatted where they can benefit from the phytoestrogen because it supports healthy estrogen balance in women. But it does so much more than that. It sets up what we call the precursors for nine of your major hormones that have to do with balance and lack of aging in your body. They're excellent. And the men don't mind. We just don't leave it in the purple container. That's all. And they're getting relief from their too much of something else hormones that's right women's nutrient i have to say this bone nutrient is a god save the deal is, is. That because you can't get calcium out of food anymore or it's really hard for you to get it this is a gift of eternal youth to your bones to your muscles but most of all to your brain your brain requires a lot of calcium one of the um, webinars I was watching today that was I'd done a while ago by Dr. Hill was talking about calcium in the brain, and he discovered the same paper I did about how we need to give our kids more of the liquid I.O. from a very early age for their brain. Because remember, their brain continues to grow until they're 26 years old. So their brains can handle a lot of you know, batting around and jumping off roofs. They can handle a lot of stuff as long as we keep feeding their body the right fat, the right omegas, and the right nutrition to mm -hmm. keep their brain growing in healthy ways. And they can recover from almost anything once you find the right balance. Correct. Great. Right. And the lifelong vitality, you got to take that half in the morning and half at lunch with Terrazyme. This whole formula we're going through is going to help you have less cravings. You will have be hungry less. You will be reducing inflammation. When we were looking at those pictures of endometriosis, did you think of it yeah. as an inflammation, Miss Deb? Absolutely, because it, the tissue is actually swelling, especially during your cycle. Just as the, within your body, in, in your uterus, it swells and fills, it will do that in the outer areas. And you can get extra pressure, what people say, bloating and things like that. So it is definitely an inflammation. 
And truthfully, Dr. Sue, everything you're telling us is healthy for our body in general. So while we're trying to, to treat a certain illness, you know, disease here, I mean, this is just good health practices that you're teaching everyone as well. Yeah, because this is when people say to me, what do I do for endometriosis? The first thing I say is you have to drink 80% of your water, body weight in water in ounces daily. And they go, oh, I don't even want to move around. I just want to lay around. Then the next question I ask is, how's your constipation level? Well, you don't understand. Right. The sugar is very comforting, and I know it's binding, and I know the painkillers are binding, but you've never had endometriosis. You don't know how painful it is. And I assure them, yes, I know what you're saying, but you have to change something if you want something to change. So if you can't hear, you should be taking all that stuff when you have an existing condition or you want to avoid a condition. Let's talk specifically about the sacral chakra, and that's where these organs are located. Mm -hmm. It's the energy center in your body for balance of nurturing and action. It's the perfect place in your body to balance the masculine aspect and the feminine aspect. So wouldn't it be helpful to do meditation? Wouldn't it be helpful to do gentle yoga, gentle stretching. Let's focus on getting that energy in balance. Right. And these are the aspects that are directly related to that area that when we use oils on that area, get enhanced. And you know how big I am on let's release the, that creativity. Let's get that energy flowing for creativity. Let's do our music. Let's express through art. And it, it's interesting that the endometriosis, when I started researching it, more and more talked about depression. Well, it makes perfect sense because if you have stored up anger, if you have stored up disappointment, if you had a period of time in your life where you didn't feel good about your feminine aspect or you didn't have a good example on how to be a happy mother or a happy wife and you were frustrated right. as a new mother, all these things contribute. So again, we're back to what you say is what you will get. So if you clearly state your intention for change verbally, the valves on the energy cycle for spiritual growth and vital change in cell direction with abundant creativity spring open. They just spring open. And this particular blend works very well for clary sage, bergamot, and black pepper. The reason you want that to flow is because you're, if your throat chakra and your sacral chakra are working together, even if you're healing from a heartache or a disappointment, even if you're healing from an injury or a loss, if you get those two working together, you can do anything. And you can reverse the course of your body accumulating these things and growing these things. And here's some affirmations that we have found are helpful. And I know we talk a lot about clear statements of intention and clear statements uh -huh. of intention to identify our virtues. So many women today were raised, I know you were too, Deb, we were all taught as children to be caregivers. We were all Absolutely. taught all taught to hold other, but everybody else's needs ahead of our own. So part, my theory, and I can't verify it yet, we're working on it, is that the reason so many people in this age group have come up with endometriosis, and some of it's pretty severe, was because they had an inability to figure out how to express who they were or what they were or where their power was because they were so busy serving other people's needs. And it's no one's yeah. fault, right? Yeah, it makes perfect sense because so much of our own inner self, it was trampled on basically because you're, you're doing what everyone else is telling you to do. As you said before, you're not having your own thoughts. You're not able to express yourself. Uh, verbally, 
you know, artistically or anything like that. And so you're just, everything becomes closed up inside of you. So it makes perfect sense what you're saying. Absolutely. Right. And I know sometimes it's hard to believe that those little muscle threads could cause pain, but remember, they're not supposed to be there. The human body is just a miracle in the layers and in the clever ways it was designed, how things are stored together and held together and the um, moisture levels work so well together. But sometimes medication will take care of one complaint or one symptom, but then it might break something else. So if you could bring yourself to organize yourself to make a little change in how you eat, because all inflammation is fed by sugar. Absolutely. All inflammation, all irregular conditions that we have in our body, whether it would be a neurological like MS or uh -huh. um, who was it I talked to earlier today? Lupus, an autoimmune. All these things uh -huh. are the, the challenge of the body, especially for pain, is that sugar feeds the pain. Sugar feeds the inflammation. And some people say, oh, it's my only comfort. I get that. But you have that in your head. So you have to say, I'm comforting myself with apples with the skin on. I'm comforting myself with veggie chips that really are genuinely veggie chips or pistachio nuts. You know, you got to uh -huh. sell yourself on a new reward system that will make a difference to you. And, and to, you know, that comfort food, we've talked about this before at other times, it really doesn't do what it used to do. You know, we used to head for that sugar or to eat that cookie or that piece of cake, and we'd go, oh, I feel better now. But if most of our listeners really stop to think about it, it's now it's a habit. You reach for that piece of bread or you reach for that sweet. But if you really ask yourself, is it giving you that same feeling? It probably isn't. It's just something that we, again, it's another poor, poor habit that we're just replaying over and over again that we now have to break. And you've given us so many ways on how to break that pattern. Right, but we all recognize it is a choice. And part of right. our power, part of our power is recognizing what we are in charge of. And so if we expect our body, like every part of my body functions perfectly, if you say that over and over again, your cells are going to start to respond. I am filled with amazing creative energy daily. I give myself permission to enjoy guilt-free pleasure. I love myself. I am enough. And don't forget the part of the battle is television and movies and what are all those media things. They feed our young people poor standards for what's beautiful. And they're they're struggling to try to help young people figure out what virtues are or who the heroes could be. That's how I see it. And if we could help them love themselves and understand they have a voice from a very early age, we would have less disease. Mm -hmm. Menopause. Yes, sometimes mm -hmm. people get fibroid growth so bad that they recommend surgery. And endometriosis happens because with the little growth of the fibroids inside the inner uterine tissue, things cling and stay. And the cells are, are pretty amazing because they're not quite dead. That doesn't mean they're not quite alive. So they right. sort of replant themselves in this really cool, moist, warm place. So then you have a sticky mess inside your uterus. Again, if you resist being constipated, if you eliminate white sugar for a six-week period of time, you'll find your body is starting to self-correct. But again, the big thing is shifting your attitude. Be the butterfly. Allow Aww. change to happen. Come out of your cocoon. Now, Terry, do you have any questions that have come through that maybe we didn't address? I'm actually good, Dr. Sue. I don't 
I haven't had anybody text me this evening. I think people are, th this was awesome. So I'm, I'm good at this end unless somebody starts now. Okay. Well, we were, we were trying to help people understand one more aspect of the human body can benefit from your 20 minutes exercise. Remember the pyramid we've talked about at every meeting now for the last how long? And doing that, yes. what is that um, magic box of things you can get if you go to one of those meetings? The cleanse and restore? Yes. Well, it works great for just getting rid of the toxins we absorbed from driving through Taco Bell two years ago that never left our bodies. But <laughs> it's also helpful for conditions. All the conditions can change if you allow change to happen. And it will. Well, this, this has been wonderful. I mean, it is. It's amazing because I just think we need the reminder over and over again. And it's something that people deal with regularly. Somebody just wrote in and asked about pain, what to do for pain different than, um, whoops, what to do for pain different than taking pain pills. Um, I do a lot of things with vetiver. I do a lot of things with vetiver. Um, right across the abdomen with bergamot. Bergamot is extraordinary. It's great for the brain, but it's also excellent for sore muscles and pockets of soreness. It helps things just remember how to be smart. Take the vetiver with the bergamot, throw a little sandalwood or frankincense in there. I would mix it with balance for the low back because the low back reports a lot of pain to do with endometriosis. But again, if you avoid constipation, if you can remember every time you eat, you should be exercising, drinking your water, and having enough fiber, within 20 minutes, you're eliminating waste. If you can make your body do those things, then the low back pain almost always disappears. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, as much as people think that having that glass of wine at night or oh, something. Are you still there? Yes. Can you hear me? 